Now for you whitetail freaks. Thanks for being patient. I think the wait will have been worth it. You are going to go hunting some great whitetails with me, and I hope these hunts help you all feel better about the hunts you have been on where the deer finish the winter. I have found whitetails to be one of the hardest animals to take with a bow, and through the years they have taught me some hard lessons. Lessons that have made me a better hunter. This is the Indiana muzzleloader season. I'm here with just my slayer, but we're still going to put one down. Stick with us, we got deer all the way around us right here, and it's just getting down. Here is proof that there are still some great bucks left in the woods after gun season. It always amazes me how bucks like this get by, even in states that have extended gun seasons right through the middle of the rut. I guess that's why I love whitetails so much. They are total masters of survival, and in my opinion, even an old mama doe is a true trophy. My brother Tracy had an encounter with this particular deer on the second day of the Indiana archery season. An encounter that led him to shooting this buck. However, the shot was high in the zone, commonly referred to as the nowhere zone. We spent considerable time tracking the deer until there was absolutely nothing left to go on. And then, you wonder, did we overlook some seemingly insignificant sign? Did the deer die and disappear forever? But two months later, fully recovered, here was the same tremendous deer calmly feeding with a smaller buck at just over a hundred yards. I threw everything I had at the huge buck to try to get him back down the hill and under our tree. The problem being, we were at eye level with the bucks and were on the back side of the shotgun season and in the middle of the muzzleloader season. These guys were definitely not unpressured deer. Whitetail bucks crave heavy cover during the daylight hours, especially a buck like this. And as the sun slid slowly over the treetops, I knew this encounter would soon be over. The buck would either come back down the hill or would continue upward toward a bedding area where he would spend the rest of the day. I was running out of time in a hurry. The monster whitetail chose the latter, but then again, they seem to make the right choices the majority of the time. That is a monster. He's, he's only uh, what, 18 inches wide, but he's freaking got 15 inch tines, or 14 inch tines on him. Guys, well, guys, what do you think about that brood? My, my brother Tracy was in here, or at least early home season, and hit that buck, and he hit him high, and we tracked him for two days, finally lost him. sucks for Tracy because he didn't get the deer but then it's cool to be able to see that deer again and know he made it. That didn't sound good that's why that 